Dear listeners, let's get to know each other even better. Please write your name and let us know if you're a subscriber to our channel. Also, share what you like and what you don't like about our channel. Thank you. After a fruitful phone call that left Mr. Gerald Hayes jubilant, I found myself reflecting on my adeptness in maneuvering finances. With my expertise, I seamlessly navigated the transfer of over $10 million across four countries and through the channels of 12 banks, effectively laundering his funds and shielding him from any prying governmental investigations. I am Thomas Parker, a figure esteemed for my prowess in money movement, asset concealment, and safeguarding individuals from legal repercussions. I maintain a strict policy of non-involvement in my clients' affairs, thereby insulating myself from scrutiny by federal authorities and ensuring my ethical compass remains steady. While I'm aware of the nature of my clients' activities, I adhere to the principle of don't ask, don't tell. My endeavors have not only yielded substantial wealth, but also established me as a master strategist in financial matters. Currently, I manage 16 bank accounts spread across eight countries, maintain 10 crypto wallets, and operate a company that oversees my assets, including my residence, vehicles, and all expenses. Drawing a modest salary of $50,000 annually from the company covers my incidental expenses. By ensuring the company generates a nominal profit to maintain legitimacy and flies under the tax radar, I shield myself from civil liabilities, lawsuits, and potential divorce settlements, as my documented net worth remains minimal and my income is conspicuously low. Many of my clients, recognizing the value I bring in resolving their financial dilemmas, have offered me various incentives as tokens of appreciation. These gestures range from women to trips, even protection, virtually anything one can imagine. Until now, I've declined all such offers. However, my current circumstances have necessitated that I reconsider, leading me to accept assistance in surveillance, protection, and employing certain assertive strategies. My business associates, eager to reciprocate for the services I've rendered them, were enthusiastic about lending a hand. At home, my wife Melissa perceives me solely as a financial advisor, which is accurate to a degree. Holding certifications as both a certified financial advisor and a CPA, I fulfill that role. However, she remains unaware of my earnings, the extent of my assets, or the existence of my offshore accounts. All she knows is that our company covers the expenses for our $5 million estate, vehicles, and living costs. The topic never arose because Melissa leads a comfortable life without the need for employment, enjoying a new luxury car each year and an unrestricted budget for shopping and entertainment. Throughout our five years of marriage, Melissa appeared content and cherished our time together. She exuded happiness, particularly in our intimate moments where we shared many memorable experiences. Yet, unbeknownst to her, a figurative Category 5 hurricane loomed over our paradise. Melissa and I embarked on a two-year courtship before tying the knot at the tender age of 25. Now five years into our marriage, Melissa had just celebrated her 30th birthday. Possessing a stunning figure with long legs and a captivating face, she could easily be deemed a trophy wife by many. Her blonde locks and mesmerizing blue eyes drew attention from men wherever she went, often sparking flirtatious advances. Yet she proudly displayed her wedding band and a dazzling three-carat diamond ring, signifying her commitment to our marriage. Prior to our marriage, I discovered that Melissa had dated a man named Jason Nelson during her college years. She had been deeply infatuated with Jason, but he wasn't inclined to settle down at the time. Instead, he enlisted in the Marines, leading their relationship to gradually fade away. However, it became apparent to me that Melissa had never truly moved on from her feelings for Jason. Now, eight years later, Jason had returned to our town after completing his military service. Upon his return, Jason naturally sought out old acquaintances, including my wife. Melissa had always been under his spell, and upon obtaining her cell phone number through a mutual friend, he began texting and calling her, attempting to reconnect for old time's sake. It had been six weeks since Melissa's behavior began to shift, 
a change likely spurred by the guilt of her clandestine communication with Jason. While her newfound attention to me, even in intimate moments, was appreciated, it deviated from her usual demeanor. Although Melissa had always been attentive and lively, her actions now hinted at something amiss. I resolved not to passively wait for answers, and instead kept a closer eye on her. During a weekend barbecue, a friend casually mentioned Jason's return to town. It dawned on me that his arrival coincided with the alterations in Melissa's behavior. The following day, I reached out to one of my trusted associates in business and confided in him about the situation, seeking his assistance. He eagerly offered his support, recognizing an opportunity to reciprocate for the financial gains I had secured for him and the legal troubles I had helped him avoid. After providing him with all relevant details, he assured me that his team would promptly look into the matter. Utilizing their expertise in navigating the deep and dark web alongside various surveillance techniques, my associates compiled a comprehensive four-inch file on Jason Nelson. The dossier contained an exhaustive array of information, ranging from his birth certificate to college transcripts, family lineage, and military service records. I found myself in possession of a dossier more detailed than what his own mother might possess. I also received a daily printout of his text messages, which revealed an alarming frequency of over 15 messages a day sent to my wife, Melissa. Although the means by which this information was obtained remained a mystery, I refrained from probing further. Initially, the messages appeared innocuous, typical of old friends catching up. However, within the first week, they took a sexual turn. While I was relieved to see Melissa rebuffing his advances initially, my concern grew as his persistence wore her defenses down, leading her to reciprocate his flirtations. My indignation towards this predatory behavior intensified as it became evident that Melissa still harbored feelings for this individual. It was clear to me that trouble loomed on the horizon. After four weeks of relentless flirting and text exchanges, he managed to persuade Melissa to meet him for lunch. The audacity of his request for her to dress provocatively, citing his longing for her, left me seething with rage. To my dismay, Melissa not only agreed but even suggested forsaking her undergarments, reminiscing about past encounters. My fury reached a boiling point, prompting me to seek counsel from my business associates, who offered advice on how to handle the situation. Together, we devised a plan to confront this individual while they were together at lunch, ensuring there was someone nearby for protection if needed. Through the meticulous surveillance conducted by my friend's team, we pinpointed the exact time and location of their rendezvous, allowing us to prepare accordingly. Thursday, June 16th. Entering the restaurant, I immediately spotted them nestled in a secluded corner. My heart pounded as I took in the sight of Melissa, dressed provocatively, in a low-cut dress without a bra, fueling my anger anew. They sat side by side in the private booth, their backs turned to the rest of the restaurant, appearing altogether too comfortable in each other's company. I noticed a burly figure trailing me, presumably one of my backup plans, as I approached their table. Both Melissa and her companion looked up as I greeted them. Hello, Melissa, I said calmly as I slid into the booth opposite them. The imposing figure who had been following me was now discreetly positioned several tables away. Meeting Melissa's gaze with a friendly smile, I inquired, Won't you introduce me to your companion? Tension thickened in the air as I locked eyes with Melissa. Jason's expression betrayed confusion, while my wife's face registered a blend of shock and guilt. Despite her attempt to retract her hand from Jason's grip, he held on firmly, his smile morphing into a smug smirk, signaling his defiance. It was clear that the audacious flirt wasn't about to yield. Honey, this is Jason Nelson. Jason, meet my husband Thomas. Melissa's voice quivered as she made the introduction. Her nervousness was palpable, contrasting sharply with Jason's smug demeanor. He remained silent wearing a smirk that seemed to taunt me, silently asserting his dominance as if to say, I have your wife, and there's nothing you can do about it, buddy. Without hesitation, I addressed Melissa directly, trying to maintain my composure. I hate to interrupt your lunch, 
but I need to speak to my wife privately for a few minutes. Would you mind stepping out of the booth? I requested, my tone steady despite the turmoil within. Reluctantly, Jason released her hand and vacated the booth, allowing Melissa to stand up, clutching her purse protectively against her chest. She stood between Jason and me, visibly uneasy as I guided her towards the back of the restaurant heading towards the bathrooms. Her silence spoke volumes, leaden with guilt and apprehension about being caught in such compromising circumstances with Jason. I led her into the empty men's room, where the tension hung thick in the air, ready to address the situation head-on. Melissa, why aren't you wearing a bra? And that dress is far too revealing. I admonished, frustration seeping into my voice. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she stood there, silent and trembling. Taking hold of the dress at her waist, I gently turned her towards the mirror, forcing her to confront her reflection. Is this how you choose to present yourself when I'm not around? Melissa, what exactly are you playing at? Are you trying to portray yourself as some sort of town prostitute? I stated firmly, my disappointment evident. In a desperate plea, she cried out, No, it's not what it seems like. I know how it looks, but I have a valid explanation. Once I explain, you'll understand, I promise, she stammered, hastily pulling down the dress that had ridden up too high. In a tone laced with authority and gravity she had never heard from me before, I spoke deliberately, each word carrying weight. It's evident we need to address this situation. If you harbor any desire to salvage our marriage, you will adhere strictly to my instructions. However, if you choose otherwise, don't bother returning home, as our marriage will be irreparably severed. Right now, you will take your purse, exit this establishment without so much as a glance at your companion, and proceed directly to your car. Drive home, prepare a pot of coffee, and await my return. I shouldn't be more than ten minutes behind. You are forbidden from contacting your boyfriend or anyone else until we have had our discussion. I will handle the explanation for your departure. I noticed she avoided meeting my gaze, likely consumed by guilt over being caught in this situation. Should you fail to comply with my directives, don't expect to find shelter at home tonight. I will contact you with further instructions on how to proceed from that point forward. And one more thing, do not change out of that dress. I want you waiting for me exactly as you are now, I commanded. Oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? When Jason reached out to me, I was initially relieved to hear he was safe and out of the military. I always worried about his well-being. Jason was my first love, and it took me a long time to move on after he left me all those years ago. Although our romantic feelings had long since faded, I still harbored a deep care for him. I know I love Tommy, and he's been the center of my world since we met. I would never want to jeopardize our relationship or cause him pain, which is why the situation is tearing me apart. Jason's flirtations and sweet words tapped into a part of me that I thought I had buried long ago. He had a way of making me feel like a naive schoolgirl again, and I loathed my inability to resist his advances. Despite my efforts to rebuff him, his persistent flirting and constant messages eventually wore me down, leading me to agree to meet him for lunch. Engaging in these conversations with Jason filled me with overwhelming guilt and self-loathing. Deep down, I knew I was betraying Tommy's trust and our relationship. I should have been honest with Tommy from the start, informing him about Jason's return to town and our communication. Keeping it a secret weighs heavily on my conscience, and I regret it more than words can express. Jason possesses a certain charm that draws me in, and when he requested I wear something alluring, I found myself agreeing despite knowing it was wrong. I hesitated, grappling with guilt over even considering dinner with him, let alone dunning such a risked dress. Yet his persuasive words left me unable to resist. Despite my inner turmoil, a text from Jason expressing his anticipation to see me pushed me further down this path. Although I struggled with the urge to confide in Tommy, I rationalized that a simple lunch for old times' sake wouldn't be significant, just a fleeting reunion, as Jason put it. He had a way of coaxing me into things, even against my better judgment. 
I'll admit, seeing him in the restaurant stirred up a mix of emotions within me. There was a peculiar yet exhilarating sensation fueled by my lingering attraction to him. I always sensed a unique chemistry between us. And now, after eight years in the Marines, he appeared even more irresistible, a mass of rugged handsome muscle that could captivate any woman's imagination. My cheeks burned with embarrassment as he pressed his lips against mine, guiding me into the secluded booth. It felt like a blast from the past as we shared laughs, reigniting a sense of familiarity that made it seem as though he had never left. Happiness and excitement bubbled within me, his hand enveloping mine on the table providing a sense of security and warmth. In those fleeting moments of laughter and enjoyment, Tommy's sudden appearance shattered the illusion. Suddenly, there he was, standing before us, then seated across from us with a chilling grin etched across his face. Dread washed over me as I realized the implications of our intimate moment in front of Tommy. His gaze fell upon our intertwined hands, and my heart sank as I witnessed the mixture of pain and fury in his eyes. I yearned to bridge the divide, to express my love for him and erase his anguish, yet I remained immobilized by guilt. The disdainful look he cast upon me shattered my heart. The man I had spent five years loving now regarded me with revulsion, witnessing me entwined with another, an ex-lover no less. Paralyzed by indecision, I sat there, unable to utter a single word. The mere mention of Tommy wanting to speak with me sent a wave of dread through my chest. I braced myself for the inevitable, the confirmation that our relationship was over. Stepping into the men's room with him, uncertainty clouded my thoughts. I could only imagine what was running through his mind. And in that moment, I felt the weight of guilt like a heavy burden, akin to that of a spouse caught in infidelity. His directive for me to return home and await his arrival resonated with an unsettling intensity. His demeanor sent shivers down my spine, prompting a visceral fear within me. I knew I had to heed his words, to salvage our marriage and convey the reasons behind my actions. It was imperative to mend what was broken, and so I silently consented to his terms, however daunting they may have seemed. As he expressed his intention to confront Jason alone, a surge of apprehension swept over me. Jason's imposing stature and eight years of marine training posed a formidable threat to Tommy's safety. I longed to dissuade him from such a risky course of action, but I remained silent, understanding the futility of my protests. Though I attempted to express my remorse, Tommy's insistence for me to depart and his assurance of his imminent return left me with a sinking feeling of impending trouble. His instruction not to change my attire served as an ominous reminder that I would soon be called upon to account for my actions. How did I allow Jason to persuade me into this? He's the last person I wanted involved in my life. All I wanted was to reminisce and have some innocent fun. But now, seeing it through Tommy's perspective, it seems like I was on the verge of betraying him with Jason. Damn it, how can I rectify this mess? I felt the weight of everyone's eyes on me as I traversed through the restaurant and made my way to my car. I couldn't bear to glance at Jason, knowing he must be wondering where I was headed. It took me several moments to gather myself enough to drive back home. That drive felt like an eternity. The anguish in Tommy's gaze brought fresh tears to my eyes. How could I have hurt him like this? I can't believe I allowed Jason to manipulate me. And now I need to find a way to make things right with Tommy. Damn it, I'm in deep trouble because of Jason and my own foolishness. Once I reached home, I brewed some coffee and sat there, pondering what transpired during their conversation. How long until Tommy arrives? Will he unbleach his anger? Can I salvage our marriage? I have to. I can't imagine living without Tommy. And he needs to understand that he's the only one I truly love and want in my life. The narrative is told on Thomas' behalf, back at the restaurant, and my conversation with Jason. I returned to the table and engaged in conversation with Jason. Well, it seems Melissa won't be returning, and I wanted to have a discussion with you. I'm sure you're aware that Melissa still harbors feelings for you and can be easily swayed, as evidenced by today and the past few weeks. 
However, it's important for you to realize that she is committed to me in marriage, and I'm not open to sharing. I continued, I'm not possessive or unreasonable, so this afternoon I'll give Melissa the choice to either remain in our marriage or leave me for you, but not both. She will make this decision independently, without any influence from you. May the best man prevail, and if she chooses you, then so be it. However, if she decides to stay in our marriage, she will have no further contact with you. If you don't hear from her today, I expect you to refrain from contacting her again. Do you understand what I'm conveying? Jason responded, Listen, I'll contact her whenever I please. She's a capable adult who makes her own choices. You don't possess her. One thing's for sure, she will inevitably return to me. She can't resist. I'm sorry, but you'll have to come to terms with that. He said, sporting that familiar smirk once more. Oh, Jason, I was hoping you'd be a bit more reasonable. I mean, you're quite the catch, with your rugged good looks and muscular physique. Surely there are countless single women out there who'd be eager to have your attention. Why can't men like you just steer clear of married women? You see, Jason, you might be this charismatic, attractive guy who still holds sway over Melissa's heart, but you're underestimating me. Listen, Jason, you don't really know much about my life or the circles I move in, and that, my friend, is where you're making your first mistake. I'm privy to a lot more than you might think. For instance, how are your parents, Gabriel and Natalie, doing? They seem to dote on their two dogs, Rocky and Roxy, don't they? It's been quite a while since you last saw your sister Christine in Austin. Her three daughters must be growing up fast, and I'm sure they'd love a visit from their uncle Jason. Oh, and about your best friend Bob. Well, his girlfriend's expecting, and it looks like it's going to be a boy. She might not have broken the news to him yet, but I bet he'll be thrilled. Your persistence in reaching out to Melissa hasn't gone unnoticed either. You may fancy yourself as quite the tough guy, but the connections I have in my line of work, let's just say they're not ones to be trifled with, and they owe me more than a few favors. I smirked and retorted, as you've so confidently put it, let's find out tonight who truly holds sway. Will she choose a macho charmer like yourself, or will she honor the commitment of our five-year marriage? You see, Jason, I'm approaching this situation with civility. I'm affording her a choice. Her decision will be straightforward. She can opt to be with you, bidding farewell to me and our marriage. If that's her resolve, I'll accept it gracefully and wish you both well. However, I won't share my life with a woman who desires another man. It'll hurt, undoubtedly, but I'd rather let her go now and move forward. Conversely, if she elects to remain faithful, there will be adjustments following her recent behavior with you. The breach of trust necessitates restoration. Now concerning you, if she opts to stay with me, you will cease all contact with her. No texts, emails, calls, or interactions through mutual friends. You'll vanish from her life entirely. Should you chance upon her in a restaurant, party, or club, you'll promptly depart. No clandestine maneuvers or attempts to reach out behind my back, as the repercussions will be severe. Your loved ones will bear the consequences of your recklessness. Do you grasp the gravity of what I've outlined? Are you comprehending the seriousness of my stance? Jason sat there, his face frozen in disbelief, grappling with a whirlwind of emotions and thoughts. How do you possess such intimate knowledge about my family and me? He finally managed to articulate, his voice tinged with a mix of astonishment and suspicion. His interlocutor maintained a calm demeanor, yet there was an undercurrent of menace in his words. Let's just say I've cultivated some unsavory connections over the years. My outward appearance may deceive you, but rest assured, there's more to me than meets the eye. The gravity of the situation began to sink in for Jason. So, you're seriously considering allowing her to leave you for another man? He questioned, incredulity coloring his tone. The other man's reply was unwavering. I always keep my promises. If she strays, she'll have made her choice. But if she remains faithful, she stays with me. Jason, attempting to maintain his composure, countered, 
I hope you're true to your word about granting us peace, because she's made it clear she wants to be with me. She's confessed her desire, and I won't stand idly by. Though he attempted to project confidence, Jason couldn't shake the gnawing uncertainty that lingered beneath his words. This individual exuded arrogance, yet he couldn't ignore the possibility that he might be outmatched. The truth would reveal itself soon. Rising from my seat to depart, I uttered, I hope to never cross paths with you again or engage in unsavory deeds, but time will tell. As I made my exit, a figure lurking in the shadows rose, casting a menacing glare at Jason before departing a minute after me. It was evident that Jason now understood I had someone watching over me, challenging his perception of me as a docile, unsuspecting spouse. Driving home, my mind swirled with thoughts of whether the woman I cherished deeply would ever share my bed again. Would she opt for him and forsake me, or remain loyal to her marital vows? Melissa remained oblivious to the profound impact her decision would have on her life. Opting for Jason would leave her destitute, with only a meager alimony based on my modest income. The car, owned by the company, would be promptly reclaimed. Similarly, the house, registered under the company's name, wouldn't be within her reach either. She would find herself without a roof over her head and means of transportation. Our joint bank accounts held a paltry sum, which we would divide, leaving her with less than $5,000 in cash. Lacking employment or marketable skills, her earning potential would be limited to minimum wage. With Jason currently unemployed, her lifestyle would plummet from luxury to scraping by in a modest apartment, likely finding employment at a place like Walmart just to make ends meet. The unfolding of events promises to be intriguing indeed. The house greeted me with an eerie silence as I stepped inside. Melissa sat at the kitchen table, her demeanor tense, tears welling in her eyes as she sipped her coffee. Pouring myself a cup, I settled across from her. Melissa, I'm aware of everything, including the exchanges you've had with Jason. Before you inquire further, understand that I have connections through my business dealings, and some owed significant favors. They're not individuals you'd want to cross paths with. I know you're remorseful, but apologies hold little weight now. Your actions today have shattered my trust and breached the boundaries of our marriage. By prioritizing him over me, you've shown a blatant disregard for our relationship. You know me well enough to understand that I won't tolerate disrespect. Some define infidelity solely in physical terms, but in my world, even the mere contemplation of another man crosses that line. From your conversations with Jason, it's clear that you've crossed boundaries. The suggestive attire, the intimate gestures, all constitute a betrayal in my eyes. The absence of physical contact is the sole reason we're having this conversation. It's crucial for you to understand that I won't tolerate sharing you with anyone else, especially not a cheating spouse. I'm aware of the bond you once shared with Jason, and I recognize that there are lingering emotions. However, let me make it clear, I won't stand for you being with him or anyone else while you're still married to me. The reason I haven't taken drastic action yet is because my love for you runs deep, and I'm determined to salvage our relationship. But before we proceed, I need to ask a question, and I expect honesty because I might already know the truth. When you were with him, did you allow any intimate touching? Has anyone besides me ever crossed that line in our marriage? No, never. I swear, it's only ever been you. But you were willing to entertain the idea today, weren't you? She lowered her head, tears streaming down her face. I don't know. It wasn't my intention. I'm so sorry for everything. I feel like such a fool. Please forgive me, Tommy. Well, if he had touched you, our conversation would be over. It seems that apart from some hand-holding and texting, nothing has occurred to end our marriage, although I'm deeply disappointed in your behavior. Now explain to me, why did you choose that revealing dress? Were you planning to seduce him and betray me? Oh God, no. I would never do that. It's hard to explain. But I just wanted to feel attractive again to relive some past feelings. I know it was foolish and selfish, 
but he has a way of influencing me. I never intended to sleep with him. You have to believe me. Melissa, I want to believe you, but your actions today force me to confront a serious question, one that demands an honest answer. I've made it clear that I won't share you with another man, nor will I remain married to someone who harbors feelings for someone else. So here's the choice I'm giving you, and it's one you need to consider carefully because once you decide, there's no turning back. I will not tolerate betrayal or disrespect again. I know you love me, and I understand the history you share with Jason. That's why I'm offering you this choice between Jason and our marriage. If you choose him, I'll let you go. I'll ensure a fair divorce settlement and guarantee both of your safety without seeking revenge. Alternatively, you can choose to stay in our marriage, remain faithful to me, and honor our vows. It's a straightforward decision with significant consequences. If you choose Jason, I'll expect you to leave the house with your belongings by the weekend, and I'll initiate divorce proceedings immediately. If you choose to stay married, you must cut all ties with Jason, today and forever. He will be dead to you. I reiterated the same conditions I laid out for Jason, emphasizing that they must never be in the same place at the same time, and that I would be aware if they were. Without hesitation, she agreed to my terms. Melissa, today you have a chance to redeem yourself, a rare opportunity to choose between a past flame and your devoted husband. I'm going to take a shower, and when I return, I expect your decision. Choose wisely. As I turned to leave the kitchen, she interjected hastily. Of course, it's you, honey. I choose you. I love you. And I don't want anyone else. Melissa, your actions have betrayed me deeply. I heard your words, but I need you to sit with this for a while and truly reflect. If we're to stay together, trust must be rebuilt, and the pain and anger you've caused won't disappear overnight. Take your time and give me your answer after I return. This decision is too significant to rush, especially considering your actions today and your lingering feelings for Jason. I stated firmly before leaving her, tears streaming down her face, her head buried in her hands. I took my time in the shower and getting dressed. Upon my return to the kitchen, she rushed to me, enveloping me in a tight embrace, showering me with kisses. Tommy, I'll never leave you. I'll never make that mistake again. I promise to make it up to you and be the perfect wife. You're my husband, and I want our future together with children. Please don't leave me, she pleaded, her grip firm and her kisses fervent. We held each other, kissed passionately, and then I led her to our bed, reclaiming my wife. In that moment, as we lay together in silence, the world faded away. Husband and wife reunited. We both knew that nothing would ever come between us again. The narrative is told on Jason's behalf the following day. Damn, no call from her. Looks like she's sticking with that jerk. Can't believe it. The chemistry we had, her demeanor, everything led me to think she'd choose me. If only I could have sealed the deal that afternoon, she'd ditch Thomas without a second thought. Her husband really threw a wrench in my plans. Who is this guy anyway? And how does he know so much about me and my family? Well, I'm not giving up just yet. I still believe I can win her back. Sorry, Thomas, but you're about to lose your girl. The narrative is told on Thomas' behalf, three days after the confrontation. A few days later, as expected, Jason couldn't resist the urge to send Melissa a text, attempting to lure her away from me. Predictable. Fortunately, Melissa promptly showed me the message and refrained from responding. She knew I would see it, and wasn't taking any chances. I commended her for her transparency and appreciated that she didn't engage with him, seeing it as a positive step in rebuilding our trust. The following day, I decided to reach out to Jason, asking about his parents' search for Rocky and Roxy. Jason's immediate reaction was to call his parents, discovering the anguish they felt upon realizing the pets were missing. It dawned on Jason that his actions, particularly contacting Melissa against my warning, had caused them pain. To emphasize the seriousness of the situation, I had Rocky and Roxy temporarily vanish under my watch, ensuring they were safe, but sending a clear message to Jason. 
Jason called me back immediately after speaking with his parents, his tone seething with anger. What the hell? What have you done? They better not be harmed, or you'll pay for it. Well, Jason, you're not the one calling the shots here. If anyone's facing consequences, it's you. I explicitly warned you not to contact Melissa, but you disregarded my warning. I also made it clear that if you did, you'd experience a level of pain you've never known. Consider this a mere taste. The dogs will likely return soon, but let me reiterate, this is your final warning. Do not attempt to reach out to Melissa again. Understood. Yeah, but they better come back unharmed. Because you chose to defy my instructions, I'll decide their fate as I see fit, and you'll have to deal with the repercussions. Now your threat doesn't exactly inspire generosity from me. In fact, I'm reconsidering whether they'll return at all. How does that sound, Jason? Maybe I should inform your parents why their precious pets are missing. What do you think? Okay, I'm sorry. Please bring them back, and I'll stay away, I promise. That's a start, but remember, next time it won't be the dogs that vanish. Do we have an understanding? Crystal clear. I swear I'll stay out of her life, and you won't hear from me again. Now when can I expect them back? They'll be back home soon, but Jason, remember, I'm miles away. I can't control everything, and the people I'm dealing with have their own agendas. I'll speak to them and see what I can do. Let's hope we never have to have this conversation again, because next time, there won't be words exchanged, and you'll be facing much bigger problems. At three in the morning the following night, the relief parents were overcome with joy as their cherished dogs barked happily on their porch. Unaware of what transpired, they were simply grateful for their pet's return. Jason, upon hearing the news, breathed a sigh of relief. He even sent me a single word text after their return. Thanks. Jason finally took the hint and distanced himself from Melissa, securing a job in a city several hours away. Despite his attempts to uncover more about me, he could only access public information indicating my occupation as a financial advisor. Recognizing that there was likely more to me than met the eye, Jason chose to move on and forge a new life without his former flame. However, knowing that as long as Jason remained alive, there was a risk of him resurfacing in Melissa's life, I took proactive measures. Two weeks after the incident, I presented Melissa with a post-nuptial agreement drafted by my attorney. In it, she agreed to relinquish everything, including any rights to children born during our marriage in the event of infidelity. While this couldn't prevent a recurrence of her past actions or a potential reunion with Jason, it provided ample incentive for her to consider the consequences, combined with my increased attention to her activities and the assurance that I would be monitoring her closely. Along with the terms of the agreement, we were prepared to weather any future storms that might arise. A year later, Melissa found herself pregnant with our first child, and the bond between us had strengthened remarkably. Recognizing the precipice she had once stood upon, Melissa committed herself to ensuring my happiness and building a family together. The specter of Jason faded into obscurity, never to be mentioned again as if he had ceased to exist. That pivotal day had the potential to alter our lives irrevocably, but my unwavering love and resolute demeanor proved instrumental in salvaging our marriage. Thanks to everyone who took the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share your thoughts on the events in the comments below. Take care.